Maximus, like Origen, reads the Bible primarily as a, as a, as a work of history. And this, is a, this is pretty broad within the patristic tradition. We see this in Augustine as well. Uh, the notion that the Bible is enigmatic. The Bible is, as Augustine said, the book of signs that have to be very, very carefully analyzed. There are clear signs, there are ambiguous signs. Uh, the Bible, as, as, as Origen famously put it, is full of scandal. It's full of obstacles uh, that have been implanted in the text by the Holy Spirit in order to keep the reader from becoming lazy. Uh, to sort of, in a healthy way, trip you up along the way um, and, and to kind of push you on then to move beyond the superficial level of the text to the deeper meanings of the text. And Maximus very definitely picks that up uh, and treats the, the biblical text as having these kinds of little spurs along the way. Um, another, uh, another very, very important theme, I think, in the connection between Origen and Maximus is the idea that there is this compatibility and mutual insinuation between the Logos as revelation of creation and conscription. Uh, that, in a sense, these are the two books authored by the one word. And even though they tell the story very differently, they, they tell the same story. And of course then it, it requires a, a, a vigilant, diligent uh, exploration of the text and contemplation of both of the text of scripture and the text of creation in order to see how both are sort of living testaments of the same, of the same word. Um, <clears throat> in, the, in the course on Maximus last week we were talking about the famous statement in, in one of his works, it's often quoted, where he says basically that whoever really wants to understand the fabric of creation must first come to grips with the, the mystery of the cross and the resurrection. Um, and, 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 and so that the, the biblical narrative, the sacred history of Revelation is itself the commentary on creation. 